Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Uh, please let me know if somebody can hear me. Hello. Looks looks like it's working again. I'm not so sure. I'm removing some things here. Hello. Hello. Okay. Oh, thank you, Judy, Simon, Lucy. Okay. Uh, you know. Sorry about that. I I don't even know what happened. I've been just moving things here, turning on and off things, and I was working. Sorry about that. That's not my first video that I have problem with. I mean, it's pretty bad, but let's continue painting, okay? Hello, Marlon. Thank you, Paul. Okay, let's continue painting. I don't know what happened. Hello Linda, hello Bumboy, hello Kira, hello Thomas, Waria, Javon, hello everybody. Okay, let's continue painting. Now I'm just using this color to establish the light on the face. You see this kind of orangey, but obviously I'm gonna add some lights here, but I'm gonna have, I wanna end up with a kind of orangey color for the light every time that you see you know the sunlight hitting the face definitely there is more yellow or orange in that color okay now let's mix different orange a darker one Let's use this for the shadow. One thing that happens, remember, every time that we have a uh, warm light, we have cool shadow and a reflected, a reflected warm light, warm shadow. Sorry. Now, basically, I'm using just a warmer color for the light, a warmer color for the shadows, and I'm planning to add some purple or some violet on the shadows Camille orange, cobalt blue, a touch of white. using too much paint okay I want to be sure if the, that the drawing is okay I mean the position of the eyes nose and mouth and then I want to start using more paint okay now I still measure here from here to here to here it looks like it's pretty good Yeah, 
If you're in the process of learning to paint portraits, okay, always rely on measuring. If it's possible, just trace on lines like these ones. And it's going to take a little bit just to get used to measure the time, but that's going to save you a lot of time. Because usually when we start painting portraits, uh, the problem, uh, obviously we're going to face problems with color and but that's not going to be uh, that bad i mean we can get a skin color even it could be a muddy color or it could be maybe too intense but the problem that definitely is more about proportions it's more about painting the eyes too big or one eye a little bit up the other eye a little bit lower and always thinking about you know that the eyes are alignment for this horizontal kind of horizontal line is something that we gotta keep in mind and the measurement the measurement does another thing the center line okay in this way the position of the mouth and the nose is gonna be always right okay. hello Sarah hello Joel hello Paul Moore Hello, Maria. Okay, now, uh, what is I'm gonna paint this area here? I need to pick a brush. I need more paint. I'm using Winton from uh, Winston and Newton. There is a link in the description box to the same materials that I use. Okay. So I'm going lightly. Okay. Look at my brush. I'm not doing this. Okay. I'm just going with the tip of the brush like that. Now, let's paint the hat. The same. I'm going to prepare a lighter color for the light and then a darker color for the shadow. That's a simple way to start painting, okay? Thinking in two values. To block in you know, light and shadow and the drawing at the same time and then we move we can move to three four five values but the idea about sim simplifying this with just two values is uh, to understand that we gotta keep that always it's better to keep on the palette you know the difference between light and shadow and keep it on the painting Okay. And the best way just to keep that in mind is is to try to have an order on the palette and keep it keep it all always okay what I mean is at the end of your session painting you gotta see on your palette the order okay between light shadow let's say this is light I'm gonna create a darker color light shadow light shadow okay Mm, looks like I'm gonna reduce the head here. Okay, uh, I mean, why I'm saying that? Because this thing about controlling values, light and shadow, light and shadow, you're gonna see that that's gonna take you more time than just getting the drawing better, get, getting the proportion better, and getting the color better. 
people usually are so worried about the skin color, skin color. Maybe in a month painting or a couple of months you're gonna get the skin color or pretty close. But after doing that you're gonna see that and after getting the drawing right you're gonna see that you're gonna have problems with value control. That takes a lot a, a lot more time than than drawing than the proportions and even obviously way more than trying to match the skin color. Thank you, Sharon, from Maine. Eh? Hello, Manuel. Hello, Rob Sasu. Hello, Natalie. Okay. Okay, let's see. Uh, it's kind of colorful, but Obviously, it's the same color, it's just more saturated. Okay, let's continue. This area here is in shadow. Shadow, shadow, shadow. Clean the brush just with paper towel. Light, light, and light. Okay, now let's paint the background. I was thinking to paint the background just kind of grayish. I don't know, I mean, I think I'm gonna try to copy exactly like in the photograph, the window, the door. So window is a door. Some plants here. I don't know. Um, okay, I'm gonna draw. Okay, I'm gonna draw first the door and let's see. I usually I just paint simple background, like one color, but some variations, you know, darker and lighter areas, and sometimes some accents. Let's see, what do you think? Some of my paintings I try to change colors and some of the paintings I just try to copy the photograph because I like it a lot, you know. And I think I'm just gonna copy exactly what I see on the photograph. I mean, that's what I think now. Maybe I'm going to change my mind. Here's the door. Hello, Roman Para. Okay. Now, uh, let's see. I'm squinting down my eyes. Uh, okay, I need to go darker, obviously, here. Okay, now I'm going to draw a little bit of the tears, okay? For the eyes, nose, and mouth. Just a little bit. Yeah. I always try to keep some order when I, when I paint and it's kind of the same always. Like first I just kill the canvas, okay, completely, establish the values, and establish color, like for example here a little bit of green. Okay. 
the straws on the terrace. Hello, hello Michael, hello Marina. Rob Sasso is asking me, do you think that your techniques can be applied to dig digital medium like Procreate on iPad? Oh, okay, I, I, ha I have painted uh, with Photoshop and basically I do the same. Now, uh, I, I haven't compared myself, my, my, my digital paintings with professional digital painters. No, but I don't know what can I say. I mean, I'm, I was trying to get the same, you know, lights, shadows, values, uh, likeness, exactly the same. That the only thing that is not the same, but when I, I I did paint it with Photoshop, I just was using just one layer, and after I realized that it's easier if you use so many layers to be able to retouch. But maybe, maybe you can, can get the same. Yeah. Maybe. And digital paintings is kind of, you know, it's kind of pretty, pretty close to to traditional painting. Well, when when you try, you know, to to paint pretty close, but. Obviously, in digital painting, there are so many illustrations, and that's that's different. Okay, I'm just drawing the eyes, one eye, and then the other eye. Then let's move to the nose. Now a different brush to pick up a darker color. Uh, hello Monique. Hello Karim. Okay, this makes a darker brown. I don't know, mix here. Okay, this is gonna be for the hair. Uh, I wanna draw this area first. One try, I'm gonna try to copy is just this. What I see, just simple shape. Okay. Now I'm going to try to copy the shape, a little bit of curve here, and here's the same, something like that. Uh, Rob Sasso is saying struggling with the, the brush work on digital and I was trying to replicate it but it's weird looking <laughs> yeah. I have a couple of videos on this channel uh, I did those paintings like it was like a few months ago Hello Moises uh, Rob, I have tried, I mean Go back like uh, 
the problem is, is like I have maybe so many videos on my channel if you just take a little bit of your time in looking for those videos you're gonna see that it's kind of the same for me you know my approach is the same I mean let's say 90% of the, the same for a traditional painting a digital painting Okay, I'm gonna add more light to the face. Okay, remember that is uh, for me. It's not just about adding lights comparing with the photograph but I do that a lot obviously I compare with the photograph all the time but it's just about knowing about where are the highlights because if you study a little bit of anatomy okay you're gonna realize that that's a, that's gonna be a little bit easier just to to be able to place the highlights the lights the highlights because it's better to paint what we see and paint what we know. Remember little things like, for example, here. Here, there's always light here. Why? Because that's the zygomatic bone. There is always light here because of the nasal bone. And highlight on tip of the nose a light here because there is a muscle that goes like that from the nasal bone to the mouth and because of the shape of the mouth okay it looks like a fish to my hand it's not something flat every time that you paint the mouth you gotta think about that and not try to paint that the mouth like it's something flat and that's a common mistake light on the chin okay the idea about painting and painting again and again obviously is practice and repetition and in order to improve we gotta go always and trying to think about that I mean thinking about anatomy thinking about why this highlight this light is always here and if we see a scar okay we're gonna see so clear the cheekbone here the nasal bone okay and if we study a little bit the muscles we're gonna see uh, this area of the mouth Remember that there is always a bump here and here. Why? Because of the muscles 
that goes from the zygomatic bone, from the mandible to the mouth. Okay. a liner brush put it here this is the same set you can see here a new liner brush new liner brushes look at the difference in this stage I use these brushes for blending I use more brushes for blending but at least this is one this is uh, sometimes I use this brush it's a different brand. The result is the same. Okay, let's step back. Okay, okay. I'm gonna add more light to the face, okay? More white. One way to study, try to, every time that you add the highlights, try to remember it, no? Psychomatic bone, nasal bone, tip of the nose light here in this portion of the mouth light on the, uh, the chin light here for the bump is next to the mouth okay now sometimes we see a highlight here and obviously here too here's because of the, the bone and here's because of the fat tissue I'm going to add a little bit of pink here. This red is pretty intense on her face. It's too intense. Maybe I should knock it down a little bit. Mm, well, let's see. I'm going to see that later. Okay, remember the reddish areas on the face, cheeks, nose, chin, upper and lower eyelid. Okay. Now be sure, for example, when you paint the mouth, don't add, don't move this light all over here and here, okay? If you do that, look at that, this is going to look flat. Okay, the light is here and the value is, the value is different here, it's a little bit darker. And we have, again, a light here in the corner. You need to get a bigger brush for softening the whole face.
No. They change the shadow. Uh, right now, having this, I mean, I would be able to compare and see, for example, look at the shadow here, look at the shadow of the photograph. Yeah. Okay, that, that was my, my base color. But you can tell, you know, that I need more blue or I need a cool color here. Okay. I'm gonna prepare more light. Hello, Mary. <laughs> Mary saying Joyce has gotten Renzo to paint a hat. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Linda. Okay. Uh, oh, Monique is saying love how you teach to avoid the flatness around the mouth. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to try to get closer with the shadow. Mixing. Permanent laser and green zone and cover blue. lightly okay I'm mixing all my paint on my on the canvas can you mix this on the palette yeah yeah it's perfectly okay okay now it looks a little bit closer mm -hmm. a little bit but I still need to make it more cool, to make it cooler. Remember that we cannot judge a color alone. It's always a comparison with the other colors around the painting. Okay, the background is going to affect this color. This color is going to affect this color. The blue is going to affect the rest. Okay, for me, works just painting little by little, okay? Getting close little by little. Definitely, for example, this blue here is affecting this color. As soon as I change that, because I got to change it, now I'm comparing and I'm unable to see that you know, I need to go darker. How dark? What about what about that? Okay. If I change a color that right now I'm changing this blue. Okay, that's gonna affect the color of the skin. Now it's closer. One thing that I gotta do here, I need a little bit of light to cut the contrast between the neck and the head. Hello, Joyce. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Oh, okay. 
no one. Sorry, I thought I saw, I mean, I, I just said hello to, and I thought it wasn't in person, but it wasn't. Okay, let's see, the only thing that uh, I noticed when I compare that, I painted the face more tilted. But that's, that's the thing of the camera, okay? For me, it's more like that. Sorry about that. I think I moved the camera when I, I was trying to to fix my audio at the beginning. Yeah. And I think I'm, I'm not gonna be able to put it back. Sorry. Okay, what else? Uh, let's see. I'm looking for another brush. I want a flat brush. Okay, I don't have a flat brush, a bigger flat brush. I'm gonna use this one. I just want a little bit of white. What do you think? I would like to know. What do you all think? If that's okay, if I just try to paint even the the door here, or just change the background. You know, I soon, as soon as I see some blue, I think obviously on the complementary color, and I think in right now one of my favorite colors, orange, blue and orange, that's gonna create contrast. That would make the painting more colorful. I could add some yellowish orange, to the background, you know, to make that blue just glow a little bit more. All the blues. Okay, or you, I just can just continue trying to copy just the, the colors on the photograph, which I love, I love them, okay? Right now I'm trying to continue establishing value, trying to get close to, you see? Now it's darker here, darker here, now it's lighter here, and that's close to the photograph. Okay, let's continue working on some details. First, I'm going to put some shadow, make this shadow a little bit darker. Squinting down my eyes. Okay, I need more light. I'm squinting on my eyes and stepping back, okay? Mm, okay. Let's 
continue. Zoom in the photograph. One second, one second. I gotta do something. I'm back. Sorry. You know, I'm taking care, not taking care, but nobody's home now. I mean, just me and my father-in-law. And I'm just trying to take care of him. Uh, I don't do that much, you know, but just... Uh, what can I say? I mean... Uh, uh, the only thing I don't want him to go out because uh, he doesn't know the neighborhood okay and okay and let's continue painting Let me step back, compare, yeah, I think, I think it's okay, let's work on the nose now, uh, now position of the eyes, nose and mouth, yeah, I think it's okay, the, the mouth is just tilted different, yeah, I gotta move it a little bit, while well, the nose at the same time, you know, it looks like it's too much to the right, so I gotta move more, move it a little bit to the left, yeah. Think. Mary is saying hello Sylvia uh, I want to paint a hat <laughs> okay I'm gonna find a, a picture of a hat on a girl's head okay I promise <laughs> is there is there a school of thought painting that your techniques derives from or is your technique unique to Peruvian painters or your family oh, I haven't thought about that uh, 
my for if I speak about my formation like as a student, it's just pretty traditional. The school of art here is pretty pretty traditional. And it's like just like any I mean I'm, I'm not gonna put the school of art here in Peru like to the same level of an European school of art but the first principal of the school of art was a painter that he studied and lived in Europe for so many years and then he was the first principal and he kind of established the foundation of you know destruction of destruction of the school of art here and if you get to into the school of art we you see i mean just right away some sculptures big sculptures all of them are copies on masterpieces from michelangelo and so many you know masterpieces same size like the original ones and you realize that this guy basically he tried to copy everything about european art education uh, that's my formation that's that's obviously uh that was the idea you know but obviously teachers just change things and what we have at the end is kind of mixture between between the formation classical formation and the influence of a teacher Maybe pretty sure that's that's what happened here with so many of my my friends that studied art here yeah. And at the same time, you know, because of my, my family, there are so many painters. I'm pretty sure I got something from there too. Yeah, boom. Uh -huh. One thing I remember, maybe that kind of... Um, maybe uh it was about this thing about making everything smooth yeah, because it was what people like it at that time you know and for my dad my mom my uncle that i mean the three of them they were usually painted portraits and then they all of them they tried to get this smooth this softness on the, on the skin just be, because people like it like that Yeah, at the same time, pretty sure if I go to, let's say, study to, to Europe, maybe I'm going to notice the difference. And maybe I'm going to notice that all the things that I needed to, to learn, or maybe I'm going to be able to say that I was pretty close. Who knows? Who knows? But when I see videos in YouTube about this European, you know, school of arts, I kind of I see the same that I have studied. There are some differences, obviously, but everything is pretty close. Nowadays, the School of Art is different. They have changed a lot of things. Yeah, pretty sure it's, I don't know, I don't know how it's working right now. Hmm. 
Hello, Intesar Hussein. Sir, hello, Renzo. Sorry, he was absent since long. It's okay. Uh, uh, Rob Sass is saying, just wondering, are there any specific old master your techniques are from? Uh, I've never seen anyone approaching it like you. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay, I thought I thought that for me that was a, like kind of the same, like you know. But thank you anyway. No, I mean I think we all at the end after studying or practicing with anyone, we end up kind of you know changing little things just to adapt, and that's why even painters that I have a, that, that have studied on the same place, same teachers and everything the same we can see some differences that's what i see i mean i see when I, when i see some painters and i found out that they have a study in the same place but i see some differences i know i mean that everyone is adding something i think that happens in arts in general not just in painting you know music anything and that's the reason i think that why we we can tell that uh, we can difference, make a difference, you know, and say, hey, this is your painting. And we see another painting and say, hey, this painting is from the same guy that I saw the other one. And we see another one, a drawing, and say, hey, this looks like the same guy, the same hand, you know. Man, I think it's, it's, it's just that. Because uh, I have studied the same like everybody else, and even after finishing up my studies, I've been continuing practicing and watching videos, and you know reading some books and trying to just trying to get better. And I'm, I'm doing that every day. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, I think the nose is better. Yeah, I'm gonna have to highlight the nose. So often. Okay, and step back, squint down, down my eyes again, compare. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, happy with the painting right now, but yeah, I think I exaggerated a little bit with the yellow. It looks kind of yellowish. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of pink for the lights. Okay, what about the width of the nose? Yeah, I think it's okay. Width of the face, triangular shape. 
Yeah, that's okay. A little bit of shadow here. Yeah, a little bit of shadow here. Okay, I need to darken up this. Okay, and add some red here. Okay, darken up the shadow here, darken up the shadow here. Something is not okay with between the symmetry of the mandible. Uh, let's see, let's see how I fix that. Hello, Jonas. Uh, Inji, hello, Silva. Inji is asking me which old painting brand do you like the best? Yeah, I have. Uh, to be honest, I haven't tried all the brands to kind of say, but uh, what I gotta say the relationship between price and quality is pretty tight with oil paints which for me is different with brushes you know I have found so many cheap brushes that are pretty good but you no know, it depends on on anyone uh, for me I basically just use wind tone I know that's not the, the best yeah. some people just have told me that like hey you should use a better material and I said, yeah, 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 I think that, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm gonna do it. Okay, next time that I go to the store, I'm gonna buy a really nice, expensive brand. And then I go to the store, and then I, I, I went there and said, hey, I want, you know, Winsor Newton, I want, I want Rembrandt. And then they told me, yeah, four or five tubes, that's gonna be like, what, $200. And I said, mm, okay, you know what? I want Winton. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm cheap. But eventually, I, I will. I will just, you know, change little by little my oil paints. It's not like we're going to feel the difference you know what because we usually we kill down the colors to paint a portrait to paint the skin color it's, it's like imagine that i have a different orange here pretty intense you know pretty vivid like you say wow that's you know a hundred dollars tube orange i'm gonna kill down that color anyway to work to put it here unless i have something pretty orange in this area but that intensity of the color that's not gonna be useful for me Okay, but one thing that's going to be pretty useful, you know, that's going to be per per permanency. How long is going to stay the color on time? Hmm. Uh, Rob Sassy is saying, just crazy to me, he doesn't do any underpainting or detail sketch. Okay. Uh, you know that that thing is about practice and that thing uh, something more that I keep saying that I have the photograph next to my painting and that's pretty easy to compare yeah. that's, that's that that makes things easier for me here on the live stream you know if I paint from life and from somebody that's away from me like Definitely, I'm gonna spend maybe two more hours try to get the likeness, proportions, and all of that. Thank you, Monique. <laughs> Mm. 
Mary saying you can be cheap, Renzo, because you're talented. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> when are you going to paint with backyard mud? Yeah, soon. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Okay, let's see. Okay, uh, in this area, I'm trying to compare this shape. You see the light? It looks like a triangle. It looks like the triangle on the photograph. The shape is just a little bit narrower. That means that I have to put more shadow here. I kind of push the light. Okay, now it looks a little bit closer. Now I'm gonna blend. Okay. What time is it? In an hour, two minutes. Okay. Let's go. Let's go a little bit faster. For example, I added a darker color here for the shadow on the head and at the same time, after doing that, I added some orange and red. When I'm doing a mixing here, okay, imagine that you mix here and doing the same here, mixing on the palette and on the painting. Okay, now I'll do this a little bit darker and to light up that. Okay, one thing that I think that's gonna be pretty nice to do here. I don't know, but let's let's let me do it. Uh, add and things blue like just some like the light is you know going through the head. We need a more need a ruler blue. Oh my god, I don't have the ruler blue. Mm. I keep forgetting this William blue upstairs. Okay, I want to make this more bluish. A little bit more intense. I'm not saying that I'm gonna leave it like that. I just wanna see. Okay, this. To see this more bluish, you know, I have to knock down more of this color here. Use more grayish color. Yeah, that's pretty close. Hello, uh, Ahmed. Hello, Duke. On Facebook. Hello, uh, Sharon. Thank you. See you later, Mary. See you on the paint party. Uh, hello, Im Imagine Photography and Design. Thank you. Hello, Thomas. Thank you. Hmm. Okay, a lot of people think that thinks that I'm pretty good. I think I'm gonna start asking for a coffee. <laughs>
I just can't. Yeah, uh, maybe, maybe. Here is a good place to exaggerate red. Okay, that's gonna create some transparency on the skin. Okay, that's too intense. Okay, look at the shape here on the nostril. It looks like a triangle, like this. Okay, that's what I'm trying to copy. Simplification is the best way to copy something. What about the position of the, the nostrils? I have the image to my left, okay? If I put a brush here, what I'm gonna do is just line up you know, the nose of my painting with the nose of the photograph. And that's what I'm trying to do. I mean, I mean, you don't see me using a brush, but I'm trying to do that. That's pretty easy when the photograph is pretty close to the painting. Remember, painting a portrait is it's not easy, okay? Use all the tools that you, you can possibly use. All the tools. Use a mirror, always a mirror. A mirror is a must, okay? Use a proportional divider, anything, everything. Okay, now the other, the other part of the, the advice is at the same time you gotta practice by just by eye, by, you know, by trying to copy without anything. It's to create a balance, you know. We need balance. Okay, let me step back. Uh, I'm, doing, I'm doing okay, I think. I need to see the reverse image in order to see if something is off. Hello Thomas. Oh, that's it. Hello. Inji Rob. Oh, thank you so much, Michael, for the super chat. Uh, hello, Melanie. Hello, Claudine. Uh, 
Uh, oh, hello, the, the Siri Copley. Hi there, it's, it's amazing. Okay, well, again, okay, okay. You know what? Okay, too many people are saying that, that I, I am awesome. And I love it. And you know what? I'm going to put my coffee account here. If you love if you love me that much, <laughs> if you all love me that much, I'm just gonna apply the same psychology that my daughter gives it. It's like and my son, you know, that he loves me, he loves us, yeah. Hey yeah, baby PlayStation then. <laughs> That's simple. Okay. Okay, that's that's the coffee account. <laughs> Sorry guys, I just you know Oh I got a coffee, it was just that was fast. Yeah, for Inji Elnadi. Thank you so much, Inji. Okay. Sorry guys, sorry, I just love money. <laughs> it's just that. And coffee. And I gotta say that every time that any of you buy my coffee, I go for sure and I spend that money on coffee. Yeah. Okay, and the back. Yeah, something's not okay here. Mm, yeah, maybe I need just. Oh, a little bit more shadow in this area. I love to drink this uh, frappuccino. You know, that's a combination between cap cappuccino and ice. It's pretty nice. I, I cannot drink it down because we are in winter here. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cold. And I don't want to get the flu. I don't want to get sick. There is a, a reflected light here, it's kind of bluish. Let me see, it should be a little bit darker, I should have a little bit lighter. 
more or less intense. There is a rule you know about, uh, uh, for example, that any light on the shadow side should be lighter than a light on the light side. Following that, this reflected light shouldn't be lighter than any light here. It doesn't matter how bright it looks here. Okay, for example, it can look really bright here, really light. But you pick up this color here, okay, and you put it here, it has to be darker than the rest. And you can see there, you squint down your eyes, you see a dark, you know, stroke there. That means that the, the value is darker, okay. a rule but obviously there are there, there are some exceptions there are some times that we have for real the really intense reflected light anyway I wanted to tell you the rule Uh, Inji saying Peruvian coffee so much better than Starbucks. Yeah, yeah, I think I think so. I think Peruvian coffee is better, but it's just the thing about this Starbucks. You just it's not just the coffee, just the you know it's uh, what can I say? You know, <laughs> I just love to get there, to sit on the table, you know, upside, and drink the coffee. It's just like. I gotta say that I mean, uh, I'm also I'm pretty proud about Peruvian coffee. It, it just, it just I don't know. It just the the, the whole thing. It just. Interesting. Who's saying? Is saying? Please, someone can send me a cup of coffee because there is 3 a.m. Oh, you wanna stay awake? Awake. <laughs> I'm gonna send you one. <laughs> Thank you, Galixto. Inji is asking me, do you ever draw figures, notes as well? I'm trying to get better at that. Oh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah so many times. Yeah. I'm gonna try to paint here. Uh, I, I just found a nice photograph today that it shows the body at, this, but at the same time it doesn't show it completely and it's been it's been I mean lately I've been painting just portraits but I gotta say it in my whole let's say uh, lifetime I painted more more uh, more the human body than any other thing Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's, it's it's different in terms of that I mean it takes more more time to complete the the painting and right now I have here uh like maybe six incomplete paintings uh, and one of the paintings I have uh three women just there one is resting, the other one is stand, stand up and it's kind of 50 by 40 inches maybe, maybe, no, no, maybe a little bit more 50 by 60 inches 
that takes it's taking me too much time to finish up the painting and i mean i, I haven't touched it for uh i don't know maybe a couple of months the last time i just worked on that painting for a couple of days and just leave it there because i was trying to add something you know to make to make the painting a little bit creative and that took me a little bit of time a lot That would be nice to paint here, but I gotta say that uh, that's, that takes more time. But let's see. Yeah, I I have tried uh, to paint the human figure maybe maybe a la prima just maybe a couple of times. Usually it's been like longer process you know because obviously uh there is more to check out there's always more to to draw proportions a lot of check uh, checking out on the drawing we're gonna move the mouth a little bit up I think there was a mistake okay. moving the mouth a lot up. Oh, I have a color here that I'm gonna use. Where is it? Where is it? I, I, I had a color here that was a pretty intense pink. The name is Vivid Pink from Pibio, the brand Pibio, but I don't know what happened. I have it here. Okay, let's continue. That color is pretty, pretty intense. I mean, I could get that the pink on the lips with that color. Wait, see, this one second, okay?
Let me see if the mouth fits better. Really, I think it's better. Okay. I'm just comparing it right now, bouncing you know my eyes from the photograph to the painting, from the photograph to the painting. Mm, okay. Oh, hello, Mughal. Oh, thank you. Hello, Ernest. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Intesar. Okay. Oh, I got another coffee from Silvia Di Pietro. Thank you so much. Okay. Two coffees today. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> I have two brushes here. I'm using this one for lighter colors, this one for darker colors. I think I gotta move I gotta move the lower lip a little bit up here. using this brush uh, that I've been using for blending imagine that you're making uh, you're just adding some makeup pretty lightly okay look at my brush okay look at the pressure on my brush it's just the tip of the brush It's not it's not a lot of paint. Okay. Uh I'm gonna use a little bit of green. A knock down green. This one I think is gonna be okay. I'm gonna knock down the color here. Let's see mm, here a little bit of red, a dark red.
I need to darken up the weight of the eye here. The shape is okay. I think the change that I did the color here is pretty good. But I need to add some light here, a light here. Okay. Now the, the color in this area and the photograph is closer but not perfect. Then I'm gonna add another layer. Okay, this this is gonna put the color a little bit closer. Okay, another thing that I gotta do is darken up the neck a little bit. Darken up here a little bit. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a different green zone and darken up here. Mm, no, a little bit of cadmium red. <clears throat> Making this a little bit pinky. I have different brushes of this number. This is number zero zero I'm using three. Look at darker color, lighter colors, blending. The one that's for blending is not a pointy anymore. I don't know if you can see.
Do a bit more pinky here. In the sun, saying good night, yeah, 3.30 a.m. Well, thank you for being here in the sun, Hussein. See you next time. you have any question just let me know okay anything okay about the colors about the canvas For the nostrils, I always exaggerate the saturation here. I make it more reddish, I make it more orangey. It depends, okay? Oh, thank you, Monique. Uh, Meet Han Kumari is asking me what oil are you using uh, uh, as a medium? Uh, I'm not using any medium, I use the oil paint. Thank you, Joyce. Sylvia is asking me, can you tell me what is the size of the painting in centimeters, please? Yeah, it's kind of, uh, let's say. 30 by 25 yeah, kind of close 30 by 25 uh, this thing about using medium it depends on the canvas it depends on, on the brand you know this wind tone is not that thick the oil paint you can use it easily without any medium I had a tube of titanium white from Rembrandt. Maybe I'm not so sure if it was the tube. Just the tube, it was pretty thick. 
okay and no way to paint with that oil paint without using any medium and I was using linseed oil sometimes I just use pure linseed oil sometimes I mix the linseed oil with uh, tropenoid or mineral spirit like I said it depends It's not that I prefer not to use medium or something like that. No, no, it's just, it depends. Now, if your oil paint is not that thick, you're using wind tone, not that using, and you don't feel that it's just flowing. Uh, the problem that would be the canvas. 99% of the problems are about the canvas. About the canvas is, is, is no. uh, My advice that would be every time that you buy a canvas, add an extra layer of gesso. I used to prepare my own canvases. It's been a long time, you know, I prepare my own canvases. But when I, I've been out and I don't have anything like to prepare my canvases, I usually buy the canvases, but I, I always have a little bit of gesso to apply. And a few times I, I didn't have anything I remember maybe it was a couple of times and what I did is I, I look for the, this glue there is some white glue not that the kids use okay and then what I did I dissolved the, the glue in a little bit of water okay and I added a layer to the canvas and that was enough now that was some kind of let's say an, an emergency because I went to a different place and to make a demo and I forgot the, the gesso okay. uh, You know, they handed me a canvas and I could tell you right away that the canvas was it wasn't okay. When I went when I went to look for my gesso I realized I didn't have it. And then I I went to buy, you know, that white glue that you find everywhere and I added it here. Uh, Monique is saying that the, the size in inches, yeah, it's kind of 8 by 10 inches. Mithun Kumar is saying you're, you're doing a good job. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's continue painting the mystery. Okay, I'm gonna add more white. You no, know, I still see the face kind of yellowish, and mm, I want to knock down this yellowish on the, the face. Let me think. Yeah, I think it's gonna be just about adding white. Okay, the other option that I have that would be white with a touch of blue. Mm. 
just knock it down the 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 gel a little bit okay I don't want to get rid of the yellow completely. I want to see that, you know, because of the sunlight, this yellowish color. I just want to knock it down that a little bit. Okay, I think that's better. I still see, I still feel the yellow on the face. Okay, look at the neck. Wow. softening the edge a little bit okay if I decide to make the edge of the face really sharp I gotta be sure to soften the neck a little bit okay and here too in this way I create some depth here and here and I make the face just pop forward a little bit more Well, I use here, I have a little bit of linseed oil. I'm using the linseed oil that I have here just to clean the brushes. I dip the brush in the linseed oil and just, I do this with a paper towel. After finish, um, finishing up the painting, I'm going to use tropinoid from the hardware store and I'm going to clean the brushes. I don't do it inside here because I don't like the smell. You know the fumes could be dangerous. I haven't had any problem with oil paints ever. And so many times I have, I remember when I went, I get out from the School of Art, I rent a small room and I used to live there and paint there. It was pretty small, it was a space just for my bed, okay, and my easel. Just that I, I didn't, I didn't need anything more. I used to go to eat outside. I didn't cook. Hey, that was pretty nice because I remember at that time I used to just wake up any hour 
like 4 a.m. And that was my, my easel, you know, my oil paints, everything was there. And sometimes I, I just wake up at that hour and paint. Just like that. It was pretty, pretty nice. I stayed on that place, I remember, I think it was for a year, I think. Yeah. It's pretty nice. You know, it, it, I just, I usually, I paint, uh, I used to, to spend like eight to 10 hours daily painting and sometimes my, my schedule it, it went crazy just like uh, for a month I usually I woke up like 12 a.m. or 1 p.m. I paint and I went to bed at 4 a.m. and it was pretty you know and and sometimes I usually uh, I woke up at 6 or 5 a.m. a.m. to paint and I used to go to bed at 7 p.m. which is pretty, it was pretty early but that's the only thing that I used to do at that time just painting obviously I wasn't alone, I didn't have any family After that place, I rented another room. I remember my, one of my friends, uh, uh, his family, they have a hotel and they have a room on the roof of the hotel, on the third floor. And I used to, I rented that room and I was there. It was the same, you know, a space for my easel. And, uh, I didn't have a bed at the time. <laughs> you know what I got? A carpet. Uh, a carpet and I used to sleep on the carpet. Yeah. That was pretty funny. Uh, it was some kind of adventure, okay? Uh, I don't remember how much time I spent there. It was, I think, maybe six months. Yeah. It was the same, just waking up at any hour and paint. Yeah, the only problem that <laughs> when I was there, that's my friend that he used to go there, you know, to take care of the business, of the family business. And every time, because uh, he's a painter too, he used to go upstairs to look for me with a couple of beers. Like, what are you doing? You know, the same, I'm painting. Hey, let's drink a couple of beers. Okay. I'm gonna add some kind of texture here, just like that. Let's see.
If you have any question just let me know because if you don't if you don't ask me anything I wanna continue speaking about my life <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm gonna put you I'm gonna put you all to sleep That was pretty funny, I remember that time when I had that little studio because some of my friends, they used to go there and then you know, the question it was always, where do you sleep? And I said, here, on the carpet and I used to just like, everybody that get into that little room it was like, hey, you gotta get, get inside here you gotta take your shoes off and I said, what? That's for real? Yeah, man. You gotta take your shoes off. My friends, they were like, no way, I mean, they, you gotta do it, you know. I sleep on the carpet. Anywhere on the carpet. I don't have a spot. I remember one of my friends told me, hey, do you, do you do have a house, you know, why don't you go to sleep there? And why don't you buy uh, something more? I mean, you just have, your, what, your piece and a lot of canvases. Yeah, but you know, the, I used to move from one space to another and I didn't care, I didn't want to carry anything, like, you know, carrying a bed. No, it just was just my easel and my canvases and my paintings, it was enough. What's just about that? Yep. Well, remember that time. That was a pretty good time. And then uh, I and I end up with an, in a bigger apartment, a really bigger, big apartment, with some friends. One of my friends, he used to practice theater. And he used to rehearse all there like twice a week. Twice a week 
the apartment was full of people just rehearsing some play, you know. And the other guy was an art teacher. And my friend, this art teacher, he was kind of, he was so worried just about getting, you know, a girlfriend after a girlfriend after a girlfriend. And every time that you see him, you see him with a different, a different woman. Yeah. And at that time, you know, I was, it was the same for me, like my easel, I got the bigger, that was the living room, it was pretty big. Okay, and that was full of my canvases. Okay, uh, Rob is asking me, yeah, oh, bye Melanie, oh, Monique is saying, oh, no. oh, bye, bye Monique, <laughs> I thought you were saying bye Melanie, uh, oh, thank you Melanie, yeah, see you at the paint party, Monique, Rob is asking me, what artist new or old master inspires you? If any, do you follow any current painters, digital, digital or otherwise? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I got so many names, uh, but it's around the same. I think every time they speak with some friends or somebody about painting, it's like, yeah, yeah, we all know. I mean, it's just like, just the same painters. I go around always the same, the same guys. And about, for example, YouTube, I follow. Pretty sure we all, you all, and me follow the same painters on YouTube. Yeah, and I have started to follow like uh, a couple of digital paintings because, but that was like a few months ago because I wanted to start painting, you know, digitally and. I, I kind of stopped a little bit. I'm planning to go back to practice again. Yeah. The problem with digital painting for me is I, I treat it like I treat digital painting like regular painting. I didn't I don't create any layers, nothing. I just one layer and paint. And okay, that's that just complicates things for me. I gotta just get used to just different create different layers and just you know follow. Follow the, intro the instructions. And about the painters, uh, the same guys that we usually see, you know, Stephen Bowman, uh, Cesar Santos, Mark Carter, I mean, Tish there, all of them. I keep watching all of them. And I keep watching a uh, stream light string line art video I think that's the name yeah, they they do live streams daily and they present a different painter a different artist every day and that's pretty nice yeah that's pretty good too and at the end of each program they kind of interview they interview uh, the artist and then you have an idea about you know how they think and this guy i don't remember his name this guy he's pretty good on the interview about technique and all of those things because he pa he paints and kind of he knows what what to ask uh, just one second one second guys i'll be back in a minute
Okay. And all masters, you know, uh, there are so many names, so many names. But for traditional painters, always come out the same names, you know, Sargent, Rembrandt, Vermeer. Okay. Uh, Soroja. I try to study them from time to time and you know that I have a patron account and we used to paint to copy a masterpiece from time to time okay oh I forget the one that maybe the top top that I think is one of the best is uh, David Laffer yeah the guy just is just you know One of the best of the best, the best of the best. We better hurry up and check it out. He's 90 years old. Yeah, yeah, I gotta say that for me, that's that guy is just the top of the top. And I try to study always a little bit of, or read at least a little bit of color theory, because that's 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 always difficult, you know. Really. Control color theory, control color values. That's gonna be always difficult. Especially when I try to change things, like adding some a different background, adding a reflected light. For that, this one I need the most, this color theory. When I copy uh, a photograph, like I'm doing right now, I'm just trying to match colors and all of that. You know, trying, uh, it's not too much about color theory, you know, it's about just comparing a lot. It's more about comparing, but if I decide, let's say that at uh, green reflected light here and change the background and change a lot, a lot of things, I mean, that's, that's when I need color theory because that means that I'm changing things and I have to create a different harmony. Yep. And that's always difficult. More questions? Let's see more questions. Uh, do you have a specific technique to paint the folds in clothing? Oh, no. No, to be honest, I don't know if there is a specific technique to paint the clothes. It's about light and shadow, light and shadow. There is a pattern, obviously, because the pattern is created by the light. No, you don't create lights, creates shadow, and that basically just I try to pay attention and copy, you know, compare a lot in copy. Hello, Natalia. Thank you, Jonas. And also doing a portrait that are in the on the sun. Could be a purple shadow if the eyes are in total shadow for two. Yeah, there is always on the shadow side there is a uh, when you have a warm light cool shadow and warm reflected light 
because the warm light is that strong that is bouncing back and affecting the shadow. I mean, in the shadow you have a combination between cool and warm colors. Mm -hmm. uh, Rob Sass is saying the streamlined art channel is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good, you know, because I love, you know what I love? Uh, 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 about the interviews, because you have an idea of how a painter thinks. And I remember a guy, you gotta look look, look up that guy, I don't remember, he paints landscapes, sorry, I don't remember the names, because so many names. But I remember he was, he has some kind of technique that he was like doing, like, hey, I use like 30% of let's say warm colors 50 percent of cool colors 20 percent of neutral colors, something like that he was able to kind of calculate the amount and for him it was some kind of order i mean that that exists you know when you study that exists is it like uh for realistic paintings everybody's gonna tell you hey warm colors or accents let's call it accents you are just maybe 10 percent of the paint you cannot put let's say uh, an accent in like more than 10% of the paint because that's gonna be too much okay that's gonna call the attention too much uh, an accent is, is, is just that and usually 60% of the painting or sometimes more are just what we call neutral colors you know neutral colors are just colors that I call, what we call grey down colors are not pure colors uh, could be warm cool colors but if somebody wants to find a proportion that would be uh, something that you can use what we call muddy colors uh, those what neutral colors yeah. and I was I'm gonna remember one of my teachers he used to say there is not there doesn't exist M muddy colors doesn't exist you know, he was to, he used to tell me that the problem is you that you don't know how to, where to put the colors. And you take out that color from that position, you put it here, it's not muddy anymore. It's pretty nice. And it's just, uh, you gotta move it up. And that's another thing, you know, that usually there is a lot of optical illusions about color because, like I said before, colors got affected by other, other colors. We cannot judge. A color alone yeah. and every time that you you see let's say an intense color pretty nice beautiful color you gotta check out the colors that are around that color because usually what's happening that the color you see is the result of the other colors affecting that color okay and that's that's pretty normal when uh, uh, I used to study that with some example and exercises about how uh, creating some harmony and how we see colors looks darker when they are surrounded by lighter colors and we see some colors looks lighter when they are surrounded by darker colors and it's not about changing the color it's just about what are doing the other colors and it's, there is a lot of that on painting a lot of we gotta check out a lot of that and I started to realize that that thing that I wanted to do about matching colors that was my like I want to match the colors I want to match the colors I don't know how to get that color that I started to forget about that you know and I started to it was for in order to match a color you gotta always think about the whole painting that's gonna be pretty difficult to try to match a specific color here when we you don't have the rest Oh. oh, la la fur, you say uh, no, David la 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 fell. What about Dan Daniel Green? Yeah, that's pretty nice too. It's pretty good. Uh. Hello, Ricardo. Frank Satogata. No, I don't know the name. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, there are so many painters every time that, I mean, so many names. Sorry that 
you know, it's kind of almost impossible to remember all of them. But sometimes I try really hard, I say, okay, I want to remember this guy. And uh, the only problem with that channel, channel that is like they put videos like twice a day, I think. That's, wow, that's going to be a kind of, you know, it's going to take a little bit to find a video there. I'll try to make some lines here. Let's see, it's just to create the effect. I'm feeling hungry. I have a paint party with my patrons today. And speaking about my Patreon account, we paint. My Patreon account is basically about a paint alone lessons. It's just like like here on YouTube, the same in my Patreon account. We paint Saturdays. Somebody wants to join, you know, every Saturday we paint for a couple of hours. It's just four dollars Saturdays. We paint. We don't paint portraits Saturdays. I mean, we have we have painted a couple of portraits. But we basically we paint landscapes, still lives, any more, you know, anything. And we draw Thursdays. That's different memberships. Uh, and we paint Tuesdays. I say the VIP group. We paint basically the whole week. You know, kind of close. We paint Tuesdays, Saturdays. Sundays and Sundays we paint for about five hours. We try to finish up a portrait. No, and Fridays we have a critique session, a live critique session, and and one Friday we're gonna have a paint party and the other Friday a critique session and the other Friday the paint party. Just like that. Okay. Oh, the link the link is on the on the comment box and the description box and the link is on the screen here, you see? That's my name in um, that's my Instagram account and that's my my Patreon account. And uh you can just I mean there's some options there that obviously all the 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 sessions are recorded. That means that you know you can pay just and watch all the recorded sessions. And it's not like you gotta paint all the time. Uh, uh, Rob is saying just join your join your four four dollar patron. I mean, just to watch and listen. Yeah, that's perfectly that's perfectly okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's perfectly okay. You can join, watch streaming we go slower obviously because we paint alone and we we try everybody try to catch up okay that's uh, we take a lot of breaks and uh, about explaining the process 
Uh, no, you know, I mean, this, but like, that, that's going to be more information because there is more time. And obviously, everybody asks questions. And at the same time, I, I can see the paintings and I can just point out mistakes on the paintings. Which is pretty good, okay? Yeah, I think it's pretty good just to just make make that pretty real. Just make corrections on the go, on the moment. More questions, please. Oh, thank you, Melanie. Melanie is, she's one of my patrons. Thank you so much. Okay, I gotta go back to the face. You know, this was like taking a rest from the face. Now, going back to the face, I noticed the, the mouth is not okay. You can you see that if you split the mouth in two, this side is a little bit wider than the other side. And that's going to be about the shadow. I'm going to add more shadow here. Okay. Now it looks better. What about the nose? Yeah, I think it's okay. What about the eyes? I need to darken up the eyes. Mm. What about the shape of the face? Yeah, I think it's okay. I need to split her chin a little bit. Just here.
Well, thank you so much, Melanie. Take care. Yeah. Yeah, pretty sure it's pretty late there in UK. Bye, take care, Melanie. I need a different blue, a more intense blue. I don't have another blue. I would, I would love to go back to my life when I was just moving from one place to a different place, sleeping on the carpet. <laughs> everything, everything changed when I met my wife. You know, she was like, where is the bed? There's no bed here. What? No way. Uh, Rob Sassis is speaking about my Spanish channel. Uh, uh, 11.40 p.m. UK. Well, almost midnight. Bye, Melody. Uh, no, my Spanish channel, I paint different things. I, I, I do live streams too. But um, portraits, I mean, but uh, I pick up different images. I gotta say I paint more lately on this channel than my Spanish channel. Oh, 
Okay, things that we gotta know, for example, here there's gonna be a shadow always in this area. Here, there's always a shadow, okay? That's because of the bone. It doesn't matter that you, you don't see it. You gotta just paint a little bit of a shadow here. Remember, it's because of the bone. That means that everybody is gonna have a little bit of shadow there. And it's not about you seeing the shadow. You, you know that the shadow is there. Why? Because of the bone. And that's gonna be the same here. It could be pretty subtle, but it's gonna be there. Always. Okay, those are the things that, for example, I used to repeat on the Patreon lessons because, you know, this is about repetition, 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 practice and repetition. In order to try to memorize in some way uh, the lights and the shadows on the face and all the spots that we're going to need to add some shadows and lights because we will know that there is a light and a shadow there and we don't expect uh, to see there the shadow we started to learn by memory that the shadow, a shadow is, is in that position and the light is in that position for example here the same in this area there is always light paint here okay we gotta create the illusion that this portion it's a bump, it's kind of swollen, and it's the same for both eyes. Here, and here. Okay, now repeat, sometimes we don't see that clearly. We need to know, because that's anatomy. And the bones are the same for everybody. I got a question here. Oh, Rob says I don't speak it either, but I learned. I learned to listen. Okay. <laughs> okay. Jigging appreciator saying, "What inspires you the most when painting? I've been following you for a while, but only now I cut your live stream. Oh, that's pretty nice. Hello, Mervat. Uh, uh okay a little inspiration yeah uh, to know that this this is kind of uh, a repetition repetition every time that i paint but i think uh obviously that's a passion a passion you know a passion and uh basically uh i feel really good about painting at the end Okay, that's, it's like all the, the, the process is just my reward, it's just at the end, when I start to see the face, when I start to see that it, it's okay, when I start to see some kind of releasing of the face, volume, yeah. and it's, it's like, um, it's, uh, I don't know how to explain that, but I think is everything just to get to this point where I'm starting to enjoy this okay uh, and now since this is a passion obviously it's something that I love to do and I'm not gonna stop doing this you know in a, in a passion it doesn't follow any 
logic, you know, like saying, hey, you're doing this too much. No, we repeat and repeat and repeat. We, we enjoy it every time that we paint. And at the same time, I gotta say that this thing about learning to paint, you know, it's like, I think it's just like learning a language. It's a never stop process. That's gonna be forever. And every time that I paint, I feel the same. I feel that I'm learning something, that I'm improving on something. Yep. Yeah, I think that's it. It's been almost three hours. Uh, uh, let me see what else do I need. Okay. I think the shadow here kind of touches the eye eyebrow. Add some highlights on the, the lip, the lower lip. I'm trying to add some texture a little bit you know uh, the skin is pretty soft but it's not that soft I mean I, there is some you know the some texture always on the skin I'm trying just to get that a little bit of that uh, let me see Okay, I don't think I got it. A little bit more.
Mm. Still feel the face a little bit yellowish compared to the, the and you can see the shoulder is <laughs> pink. The shoulder is closer. I gotta change the shoulder because I'm not gonna be able to change the face. No, you know, uh, I'm gonna try to change the color of the face, but I'm gonna do it with a glaze. And for that, I gotta, I gotta wait the paint, the paint to dry. And then with uh, with uh, pink glaze, really transparent. I think I'm gonna get closer to the color. Okay, and then maybe I'm gonna add a light blue, but pretty transparent. Okay, to the face to see it again to to get even closer. That's what I have in mind right now. But obviously, we gotta do it at the moment and see what's working. What do you think about this? Do you think it's a good idea to keep it? Maybe. Just making some sky or some green. Green background. think definitely green works here you know because she's outside yeah, I think I should I, I should change to be honest I'm not so sure I need some chrome green, which is more intense. I mean, maybe I can do this. Like, I can do the same here. What do you all think? Uh, to be honest, I don't know what to do there. Any idea?
see if we see I think the portrait have to pop up from the background so it's perfect yeah uh, you mean that I should keep the door or get rid of the door mm, what do you think or adding some more of these plants here Mm. Yeah, I think the door is the door is not gonna work. I'm gonna erase it. I think it's better you know uh, I don't want to spend like an hour working on the on the door to make it perfect I think this gonna be okay just like that Yeah, a little bit more green. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow and white.
getting to the end. Yeah, I think it's better like this. <clears throat> a little bit of yellow and white no just to make this just glow a little bit white with a touch of yellow is gonna make the color glow a little bit more than just pure white Okay, Rob. Good night. Sylvie saying I change the background sometimes my paintings too. Yeah, yeah. Mervat is saying I like the background, but I think it needs to be more dark in the higher part. Oh, yeah, you're right. To create more contrast in this portion here. Yeah. A little bit darker to create contrast. It could be lighter here because it's darker here. It could be darker here because it's lighter here. Yeah. Thank you. the shape of the hat is not the same
Okay, I think I'm gonna add some glazing here. I need some phthalo blue to make it really transparent. Right now, just trying to get the effect. This. Okay. Okay, I should go darker here. Okay, let's pick up some blue and white. Okay, it's been three hours. I think that's enough for today. Sylvie is asking me, are you adding pure white? Yeah, pure white. But uh, definitely I'm thinking about uh, adding a glaze. And you know, by adding a glaze, uh, I mean I'm gonna change the color. If I add a transparent blue, definitely is the result hit the result is going to be the li a light blue because the white is going to be beneath okay and it's going to show through the glaze okay i think that's enough. Thank you so much, everybody. Amirvati is saying, I don't know why I like this portrait so much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, um, let me step back for the last time. Yeah, I think that's okay. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you everybody for being here. I hope you like it. And if you don't know, subscribe it. Yeah, you can just subscribe to my channel and check out my live streams. Okay, that's it. Yep. I think I got everything okay. Oh, I see something. I have seen something here. Between, 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 between the eyebrows. Yeah, I gotta move the shadow. Space between the, this shadow is was too short. Now it's okay. Okay, that's it. 
Thank you so much, everybody. Take care, you all. See you next time. Thank you, Joyce, Dr. Ruth Douglas, Douglas. Yeah. Thank you, Sylvia, Mervat, everybody here. Bye, take care, you all. Wait. I think everything is okay. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yep, that's it.